Hey guys, Creative Katie Karen Birchall here. Welcome to an art journal tutorial. This one features negative painting. So I'm starting off in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media Journal. There is a coat of gesso on the page. And this gesso is gesso that has thickened over time. And I am going to use these mixed media stamps. They're Tim Holtz, and I'll put a link in the description box below. And I'm stamping into the wet, the thick gesso and stamping onto the page. This is going to provide me with texture and interest into the background. You've seen me put this gesso through a stencil. This is another way you can do it. And just like the stencils, when you are done, you need to clean the gesso off the stamps. And when I say clean, here's how I clean them. I spray a mixture of my Murphy's Oil Soap and Detergent, and then I just grab a brush. You can use a tooth, an old toothbrush or a paintbrush, a stencil brush works, and just get all that gesso out of all the crevices. You can throw this in water, but you do want to deal with it. Now this one is an Inka Dinka Do stamp and it is called Flower Flourish. And I want some pattern in the background and I'm using archival ink on here. I want some texture, I want some pattern. And that's what I'm going to do. And with this one, which is very rare, I'm not going to be using any stencils. I'm just using a whole lot of stamps that I have in my stash. But you could do a very similar background with whatever stencils that you have or stamps. Then I think I want to add some, some butterflies. So this is another a Tim Holtz set. When I'm starting out the layers, I know that not everything is going to show in the final one. I'm just getting the party going, so to speak. And I just give the archival ink a little bit of a dry. Now, my goal here. I thought I was going to use yellows and greens in the background. And that's why how I started out. I'm just applying color here. And I was going to stick to the yellows and greens, maybe add blue. I'm blending the acrylic paints wet on wet when they're, you know, wet. But I know that these colors, if I stuck to the yellow, green, and blue that they and turquoise it's not going to make mud if you're not sure then just test a little bit on the side to make sure that it gives you a color that you're happy with the more you play with color the more color knowledge you'll build up and you'll feel comfortable doing it straight on Worst case scenario, if I ended up getting mud on the page, I could take a baby wipe, wipe it up, let it dry, and then cover it with either gesso or just another color acrylic paint. Instead of putting the paint on the palette, I am just putting it on my finger and rubbing it in there. That way there's no waste. So here's where my plan to just stick to the yellows and greens goes out. And I decide, you know what, I'm going to go with what used to be a typical Creative Katie background with lots of bright colors. So I'm adding some quinacridone magenta in there. When it get, mixes with the turquoise, it makes purple. When it mixes with the yellow, it makes an orangey, corally color. I'm trying not to mix it with the green because that can, depending on the pigments in your particular magenta and or green, might make mud. 
Remember red and green are across from each other on the color wheel? And those colors typically do make gray or brown. So as is usual, when I start playing with colors, no, de no defined goal in mind, the page at some point, the creative juices start flowing and it just kind of reveals itself. Inspiration exists, but it has to find you working. I love that quote. And it's so, so, so true. Adding more paint if I want a richer hue. Now I have all these bright, bright, bright colors. And when you have a very colorful background, using the negative painting technique is a bit of a natural fit. I wanted to add a little bit more now that the page is kind of revealing itself and I know where I'm going to go with this. I want to add some more detail. So I grab the swirl, the flourish, the floral flourish here and add it. I love this stamp. I really do need to dig this one out a whole lot more. It's got the swirls and then it's got the little flowers. It's just all things good. I'm at the end of my Canson Mixed Media Journal and so it doesn't lie flat. So it's a little bit more difficult and challenging to create on. And there I had to take it off the block in order to get a good print, good stamp right there. This stamp is like several stamps all in, all together because you've got the swirl and the flowers. Turning the page, because quite often I haven't decided what orientation I'm going to go in. And I decide that I want to add some dots with this dot stamp. And instead of black, I get some white acrylic paint, put it on my palette, my glass mat, and I'm adding the white dots. And this just makes me happy. clean off the stamp, and then I grab this. Now this is what you should have been in the recycling bin and discard it. We were playing the game Catan, it was a brand new package, and I love these hexagon shapes, and I thought, you know what, I can use this in my creations. So I'm just marking the center, of the page because I want one row of hexacons right down the middle. Just positioning it carefully. Now my goal here is to draw in the hexagon shapes. and then use the negative painting technique. And if you don't know what that is, stay tuned. It's a great technique to have when you have a very colorful and busy background, whether that was your plan or whether that's just how things turned out. I'm using my Stabilo All Pencil here to trace out these shapes. 
you could use a, a marker. Yeah, I could have used a white Stabilo Oil pencil as well. You just want to be able to see the line easily enough. Then I decide, you know, I, I like these circle shapes. I'm going to draw them in as well. Stay tuned to my channel because I am going to be doing more with this throwaway piece from this game. I have lots of ideas that are coming to mind and ways I can use it and create my own stencils. I'm grabbing some black acrylic paint and my angle brush and I'm going to paint out everything that isn't a hexagon or a circle. That is the negative space, and this is the negative painting technique. Now I could have put hearts on here, stars, any shape. It could have been something, you know, an actual, um, an outline of a flamingo. It could have been pretty much anything. But here I've stuck to the geometrics of that. I thin the acrylic paint down just a bit. There's a little bit of water on my brush and that just makes it go on a little easier. And using the angle brush for this technique makes it really easy. And who doesn't love the sharp contrast that you get with the black and the bold colors? If you don't follow me on Instagram, please do at Creative Katie. Also, I've renamed my Facebook group from Mixed Media Creations to Art Journaling and Mixed Media Creations. Love for you to join me there as well. I'm continuing to just put a good coat of paint. At, at some point, I was, I was thinking, I mean, with the negative painting technique, I could have done what I'm doing in black. I could have done that in any color. I could have done it. Often you see people using white. I, I thought about using aqua or teal. This does take a little bit of time, but it's very relaxing. And I just love how those brights really, really pop. Then I decide what I'm going to do. And I grab some black and white butterfly slash moth that I had in my stash. You could stamp these out with some smaller stamps. And this is a great way of using smaller focal images, be they from stamps or free printables. 
and making them look bigger. Now remember the Stabilo All Pencil that I use. It's water soluble. So before I start gluing things down here, I'm using a baby wipe and I'm just wiping off that Stabilo All Pencil. And it does come off clean eventually. But I just want to get rid of it. It doesn't really serve any purpose here. If you didn't want to take the time to get this, to clean it up, wipe it off, you could just, when you're gluing down the butterflies and the sentiment, be very careful not to touch any of the Stabilo All Pencil. I cut a sentiment from my Believe sentiment pack. And there's a link in the description box below that'll take you to Ninny's Napkins, where all my sentiments are available as instant digital downloads. And you can scroll through and see what's included in every pack. Since the background is so colorful, I chose to keep my focal images, just black and white. Using Liquitex Fluid Matte Medium to glue everything down. The tape on by the coils, that's to keep all the paint and everything out. And to give me a nice straight edge. Now I really want the black to pop even more, so I grab my fine line applicator. And in here is a mixture of white acrylic paint, Liquitex Basics, and water. And I, there is no recipe. I mix it till I get the consistency that I like. I do not have to, if, if I get it right, I don't have to press really hard on the bottle, but it does hold its shape. And just a recommendation, don't feel that you have to fill the entire bottle. A little goes a long way. So I just put a little bit of paint little bit of water and and then mix it and shake it and then every time I go to use it I give it a good shake so I chose to leave a little bit of black around the hexagon shapes just for interest and I'm turning the page so that I don't get my hand in where there is wet paint And I find that it works best if I move the needle, the point away from me. But you might find that it works better moving it towards you. Try both ways and see what's your preferred style. I have several of these fine line bottles. I have black, white, gold, and Prussian blue. And I think brown. <clears throat> Excuse me.
I thought about putting the dash dash all the way around like faux stitching, but I thought that with the background being so busy and lots of pattern in there, that the straight line would make a better plan. Loving how this is coming together. I did around the circles as well. It's not perfect by far. Now I'm grabbing my angle brush. Another thing that it's great for is using to shade around your focal images, around your sentiment. I'm using the float acrylic technique. And I do have a video where you can learn how to do this technique if it's something that you think would be beneficial in your art. I love it because you're using acrylic paint, it will be permanent. And you can see how that butterfly slash moth looks is standing out more than the one that I haven't done. If you don't know how to do the floating acrylic technique or don't want to learn, that's fine. You can use a Stabilo All Pencil, trace around it, activate with water. You could use charcoal. There are other ways to get a similar effect. And again, pick the one that works best for you. Then I decide I'm going to do some shading on these circles and on the hexagons. Is there a technique that you'd like me to demo? Leave it in the comment section. I'll definitely give it a try, put it on the, the list if it's something that I know how to do. This, you know, there it was pretty good the way it was. There was black there, but this just softened that black edge. And I think I just like it all the more. Every little step, every little bit of finishing just adds something else, makes it that much better. And using hexagon shapes like this, it makes it really easy to practice the floating acrylic technique. Now, in all likelihood, you don't have those missing game, you know, the punch out board from the game pieces, but you can make your own hexagon and make your own tracer stencil template. When we were playing the game and I had these pieces and my husband goes to grab them and throw them in the recycling bin. And I said, oh, no, wait, I can use that. And he looked at it and goes, texture? <laughs> Not quite, but definitely something I can use in your art. So repurpose things that you have in your recycling bin. Things, you know, there's an, it's amazing how much stuff you can use within our mixed media art journaling. 
Now I'm splattering with some black acrylic paint. This has just been thinned and I keep it in a container because I do a lot of splattering. Now that everything's dry, I'm going to go around the edge with my fine line bottle again with white. If you make a mess, you can grab a baby wipe, wipe it back, and reapply. Because it's acrylic paint, you have that option before it's dry to get rid of it. I don't know about you, but I really love, love, love this page. Give me a thumbs up. Share this with your creative friends. Follow me on Instagram. Subscribe to my channel. Join my Facebook group. And as always, keep creating.